Since Galloway's is part of the lid firing range, you fish here when you're allowed to. That means when the red flags aren't up and the access road is open. Firing times can be checked from the government website or from the notice board on the approach road to Denge Marsh. If you're approaching the venue from Lyd, then at the same roundabout as you would use to turn off to Dungeness or Denge Marsh, instead of taking those turn-offs, you go to Manor Road, follow that down to the end, and then cut across to Galloway's Road. This takes you all the way to the car park. The venue is best known for bass, but flatfish can also be caught, so the rigs I set up have those two in mind. Rigs are for fishing with worms and are clipped down versions in case distance is required. I have a short wire boom rig on standby in case I need to scratch around for a bite. My first outing was on a Saturday in mid-June, on a weekend when there was no firing going on. There were plenty of other people down here, especially right in front of the car park, so I ended up walking left towards Denge Marsh. Here the bass are normally caught over low water and I left it a little bit late as the tide was already coming in. Things weren't looking too good. There wasn't any surf at all, and no one I spoke to had caught anything, or had a bite for that matter. So it was a bit optimistic having one of my rods with a hollow tip and long snood loop rig expecting to catch bass. Even though the fish weren't biting, I had to check my rigs and recast quite often since spider crab activity was quite prominent. Baits were being stripped quite quickly unless I dragged the rigs, and I did still lose quite a number of hook lengths to spider crabs. I soon decided that fishing short was a waste of time, since the water was gin clear and there wasn't any surf. I had caught bass at long range at Dench Marsh, and this isn't far off there, so under these conditions that was more likely to be my best bet. Therefore, for the rest of this session, my loop rig was clipped down, rather than being used as a two snood flapper. I still kept the baits large, with double lugworm or double ragworm, hoping that a larger bass might check them out. Quite a good tidal pull running from right to left, but not strong enough to require grip leads. My 5 ounce star leads are holding well enough and still allowing me to drag the baits when needed. And when I'm casting my second rod, I'm going quite a distance away from where I did the first. This helps prevent lines crossing, particularly if I'm having to drag the baits. The 2 snood loop rig casts further than the 3 snood clip down rig, so to begin with, I'm using just a 140 gram Takana bomb weight. This doesn't dig in like a star lead, so it allows me to search the ground a bit more, hopefully finding those bass. The wind, although light, is causing a bit of a bow in the line after casting, so I'm checking to see where the line is before casting out the second rod. As you can see, I've walked quite a distance to the right before casting this loop rig. Normally, I'll be casting the rig with a lighter lead, or the one which goes out further, down drift of the other one. But it does pay to vary this, and it gives you more options. It's more of a challenge when there isn't much happening, and sometimes trying to think of where the fish are, and what they might be doing, and how to catch them, is just as much fun as it is bringing them in, one after the other. I don't like blanking, so I'll stay until I catch something, but the challenge is to work out how to catch that fish. If dragging or twitching your baits doesn't work, then changing rigs, changing your baits more often, and trying different lines might help. I have plenty of time to bait up extra rigs and keep them on standby. I'm at the deeper end of Galloway's, but it's still shallower than at Dench Marsh. Here, the tide goes up the beach further, and I'm making my first move to higher ground.
brought the first rod in so I'm now changing my rig over to one which I baited up earlier. This is still a three hook clip down rig but one with smaller hooks, size 4s instead of size 2s. I'm clipping up and getting it ready for casting. That allows me to continue fishing with my second rod out there giving it extra time before having to bring it in. The wind's picked up, but it's a bit late in the tide to make a difference. You really need a fairly strong wind at low water in order for there to be any surf and a bass to run. But since you can only fish here at certain times, it's difficult to pick a day when all the conditions are spot on. So you just have to make the most of what you've got and hope that something happens. But it doesn't look like anything's happening at the moment. Despite the lack of action, other anglers have turned up to fish the tide on the way up and over high water. However, at the top of the tide, there's a steady stream of anglers packing up and going back home. If I haven't caught, I always like to stay for at least part of the ebb. And on this occasion, that's when I got my first bite. That little knock was missed, but not long afterwards, I was into something. Scaling down worked this time. I'm sure it was the size 4 Aberdeen hooks which made a difference. Anyway, I ended up with this single place. A few days later, I decided to have another go, this time in the late afternoon and into the evening. Quite often, firing stops at half past 4 and you can get onto the beach then. This time I decided just to use three hook clip down rigs, but one of them had larger hooks, again still with bass in mind. I had fished elsewhere in the morning, so I didn't fancy too long a walk. So this time I ended up fishing at the furthest end, closest to Denge Marsh. I parked at Denge Marsh car park and walked towards the right. Conditions were very similar to my previous attempt, so my reasoning was that I'd fish a slightly deeper water the tide is on the flood, and once again there was no surf at low water, so the Denge Marsh end seemed a better bet than walking from the Galloway's car park towards Jury's Gap. The first rig I cast out is the one with the bigger hooks. This has a plain breakaway lead with no wires. This allows it to move a bit further than the one I'm casting now. This has a star lead which digs in a bit more. So I've got two different forms of presentation. As before, I'm dragging and twitching the baits to try and induce some activity and also to keep it away from the spider crabs.
Despite fishing a different spot, the session is turning out very similar to the previous one. The main difference is that there's no one else fishing here at this time. Once again, I didn't think there was any point in fishing close in, so both rigs are clipped down for distance. another long wait with nothing happening until towards the top of the tide. A few other anglers have turned up to fish and I get my first bite.
I miss it, but I don't wind in. The tip goes again. Thankfully, there's a fish on, so a potential blank is averted. Again, no bass, but I'm happier catching flatfish anyway. This time it's a flounder rather than the place I caught before. Stayed on as the sun was setting, hoping to try and catch a place or a bass, but it wasn't to be. And just as the light started fading, which I didn't film, I ended up with five whiting. So another pleasant day to be out, and a glorious sunset, but that's not really what I came here for. Next time I tried to fish Galloways, the wind was far too strong, and I could hardly stand up when I got out of my vehicle. So I decided not to bother, and went to fish the boats instead. However, I was back in late August and conditions were much better, so I was back to using the loop rig with 1.0 and 2.0 hooks. I was much more confident of catching bass this time, but I still had the free snud clip down rig since that worked previous two occasions. There was a strong onshore wind and I arrived a couple of hours before low water, so the timing as well as the conditions were perfect and my bait was top notch as well. Some large ragworm, locally pumped black lug and some leftover blow lug from South End. This time, I've parked at the Gadaway's car park and walked about 300 yards to the right. This places me on shallower water and I knew that come low tide, there would be a good surf. As long as the wind doesn't suddenly drop, the bass should come in close into the surf. However, before that happens, I'm still casting at distance. Breakers are just starting to form, and that's a good sign. This time I'm using my newly acquired Colmic 07 rods and these are sitting perfectly in the tide.
half an hour before low water and I get my first bite. As you can see, the surf is now developing quite nicely. However, this doesn't feel like a bass. I welcomed flatfish, which I first thought was a place, but turned out to be a flounder. A good start to the session, which is about to get better. I didn't have time to recast when the other rod started nodding. Well, it is a bass, but a small scorely, but at least it's promising. No need to cast far now, just a gentle lob into the surf is just required. Before fishing, I collected some shellfish which was on the strand line which had been blown up by the storm a couple of days back. As you can see, I have been using these to tip baits on the free hook clip down rig. However, black lug is still the bait of choice now. No need to clip down now, since I'm not casting very far. When I'm bass fishing, it's not all about waiting for the rod to be pulled right down. Sometimes you have to try and hit little bites. The wind's picked up even more now, which is ideal for the surf conditions, but apologies for the wind noise, can't avoid that. best now, it's best to cast right into the surf. Another missed bite on the loop rig. When I recast, I'm not clipping down, so this is now effectively a one up, one down, long snugged rig. I 
can only just cast that out to get a bite on the other rod. So the action is hotting up now. Double shot of schoolies. But I'm into something which feels a little bit bigger. No specimen, but that's more like it. That's what you come to Gataways for, but the conditions got to be right, as they are today. It's non-stop action now, with a better fish starting to show. The tide is starting to come back in and other anglers have turned up to fish and I'm into another one.
pipes on both rods, in complete contrast to my previous two sessions. Back to the schoolies, but prior to that I did lose a pretty big fish, which unfortunately broke the hook. I love it when the bites are like this. Another fairly decent fish.
couple of hours up the tide and you can now see that the surf is disappearing and with that I'm expecting the bass action to die down and I'll probably have to cast a lot further to catch. So a thoroughly enjoyable session which made up for the previous two. And this is my last of the 14 bass that I caught today. I can't wait to get back when the conditions are like this again.